Hey, what's up, everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. So check it out, the Helix Looper device thingamabob that I created. I'm going to show you how to put it together and how it works, some of the problems I had, etc. So let's get started. But first, a little time lapse, because I know you guys really enjoy those time lapses. So if you do, you better let me know, because it actually takes quite a bit of time to uh, get the time lapse footage and time lapse it. That's right, lapse. Because it's going in circles. Got anything to say? You talk really loud. I'm talking really loud because I'm voicing this thing in the middle of the night while everyone's trying to sleep. Yeah. My wife is irritated. <laughs> I think they heard you. <laughs> they understand. Oh, yeah. So, here we go. These are the standard common uh, Z809 bearings. You got the two bushings, the two outer holders. Uh, you've got the two slide rails here, as you can see. Um, you, Yeah, slide rails. Anyway, uh, this one's got the name on it. They are a little different, they, so pay attention to that. They do go in a particular spot. One slides, one does not. Uh, these guys uh, basically go on the very outside, hold the bearings in place. The bushings here go uh, between things, you'll see as I put it together. You've got the main roller, as I call it, and it's got arrows on it. You've got the uh, slide... Uh, the slide mabob, but that thing, uh, I changed it up a little different, but uh, you'll see that as we as we move along here. But that's a one-piece print. It's pretty sweet. you got the side holder pieces, and they do have arrows bearing slide in the bottom there. Um, so the bolts right there are actually 1032 by about an inch and a quarter, but they don't need to be quite that long. Um, there's a shaft. Okay, that's an 8-millimeter shaft. It needs to be approximately six inches long. That's about a six and a half inch piece. You can use a piece of all thread, eight millimeter, or you could even use uh, um, just something a little slightly different as long as it works. So put the shaft on there. Bada boom, bada bing. Fits nicely. And uh, I had the hole right there because I wanted to try to line that hole up with the hole that I had made so it could be set a little bit easier. but. And it didn't quite work out the way I was intending it to. Okay, so now you're going to take these bushings and uh, make sure that little lip is facing towards the bearing. So you want to face it out and don't drop it. And basically just uh, put it on there and uh, make sure that little lip is pushing out because that's going to be facing the bearing. Slide the bearing on, then put the outer piece on the same way, that point facing in. That spaces everything out so it does not rub. Make sure you get it on there right. Do the other side the same. Alright, so you got that put together. This is what it looks like. Make sure you get your shaft where you want it right now, by the way. And then pay attention to these arrows. These arrows are important. You need to make sure you actually have this stuff all facing the same direction, because that's the way I designed it. Alrighty, next up. I've got two sets of screws here. One's a 3M, and one's just a regular, like, plastic thread screw or a standard uh, drywall type of threaded screw. And uh, I just found what I had in my collection of stuff, but I believe a 3 millimeter will also work. And you're going to run this thing uh, in here on this outer two pieces because you're actually going to set these. Uh, I don't want them to spin on the shaft. That basically holds the entire thing in place. Now, if these plastic pieces fit super tight like mine did, you probably don't even need them, but go ahead and add them anyway. That's what I designed it for. Yep. So this next part, I'm showing you that I'm going to put a set screw in the main roller part. And unfortunately, I made a mistake and uh, didn't realize that the bolt would hit. So this little clip is just me drilling it out. Now, I redid the drawing, so don't worry, they're correct. I ended up putting a um, quarter 20 set screw down inside of that hole. So the drawings are for a quarter twenty set screw. So go ahead and put that uh, set screw in there and uh, lock it down. Alright, next up, uh, go ahead and make sure uh, you can see here I kinda tightened it a little tight and I cracked it. But uh, I had to uh, trim this thing down a little bit to make sure it was nice and flat. Make, make sure it's nice and smooth. It should not be sticking up past the outside. That was my initial problem anyway. All right, so now that you got that all figured out, go ahead and uh, grab your outside pieces. Stick your uh, 1032 nuts in those slots. They should fit nice and snug. If not, that's okay, because you can tighten it down with the bolt later. 
but uh, mine fit really nice and tight. Already, now make sure you got your arrows correct on these parts. I put arrows on these parts so you guys didn't screw them up. Um, the reason that they're all directioned in arrows is because, well, I want everything to go the same way. This is uh, this basically will keep some confusion out later. But go ahead and uh, slide one on there and then tighten the bottom screw. You can see that keeps it from falling out. And then check your arrows again. Do the other side. And again, tighten. See, I screwed it up there. See, that's what I'm saying. So go ahead and put the other screw in there and tighten it down. Just enough so it doesn't fall out. That's basically really all it's for. Ta-da! So, next step, um, we're going to grab... Well, make sure it's free. Ta-da! All right, so next you're going to grab your rails. All right, now look closely at these rails. One has a bigger slot and one has no slot. One is movable and one is not. So you got to make sure you put the right ones in the right spot. That one overhangs, so it was in the wrong spot. When you get these all set right, it won't overhang. Make sure that's all nice and smooth before you put it on here, but my prints turned out really, really well. Now I've got these uh, thir uh, three millimeter screws that should fit, but I ended up finding these... Uh, coarse threaded plastic type screws which is actually what I used I ended up actually have to cut these things a little bit smaller to fit them but these screws seem to work a little bit better than that fine threaded stuff I did not put any nuts in this uh, in these pieces so here I'm just doing a measurement check but basically I did not put any nuts in these pieces so you have to find some really coarse th threaded screws or just see if the fine threaded uh, metric stuff will hold I originally was going to design this for all metric, but then ended up just grabbing stuff around the shop. So you might have to just go to the local hardware store. All right, so next up, you're going to want to grab the uh, one-piece follower and uh, check it out. I put an arrow on here, but I actually ended up not using this particular piece, which you'll see in a little bit. But originally, I intended for the arrows to be facing against each other, not with each other. And I did that because I had this thing at an angle and um, ended up doing it differently but anyway you'll see that in a little bit so go ahead and put that piece in there in those slots then you're going to tighten down the other slide rail no big deal alright so here's uh, one of the important steps you're going to need to remember basically the reason this has an adjustment on it is because you want to make sure that this thing slides freely all the way to the left and all the way to the right so go ahead and just make those adjustments check it make adjustments, check it. When you get it all just right, tighten it down and we'll move on to the next adjustment. Alright, so um, I would like to show you how these end stops actually do the adjustment. So if you if you undo this one and you push down this one you can see the the gap opening there. Alright, so it just pushes on the bearing and then you get them both set and that bearing won't move. And what that does is it raises and lowers how much height you have inside between these two components. You really just want enough so it doesn't get hung. Um, the further out you are, the worse it'll be for you. So get this thing set just right. Where it doesn't get snagged. And try to get them even from left side to right side. So I've got a little space in there. I know it's hard to see. All right, so basically this thing seemed to work out really well, and uh, I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like now. Um, I actually ran into some problems, of which I'll show you the footage in fast time lapse. But uh, the follower was one piece, and the um, the top and the bottom were a center, like the center piece all the way through the middle, and when you would push on the top piece uh, it just seemed like it would snag every once in a while which was definitely a problem but um, however if uh, 
you just pushed on the side of the rail or the side of the block no no problems there it's only when you pushed on the actual like head because it was attached to the to the part that follows so you'll see in the next clip I I redid that all right so here's a time-lapse clip of me fighting this thing for a while and uh, it just kept getting snagged every once in a while only when holding the top lots of adjustments trial and error finally figured out that it was because it was pushing it at an angle which you'll see in this clip Oh, good dokie. So we're back. Um, I made some changes. So one of the problems that I'm having is uh, this whole thing is loose, and so if there's if there's force on this guy in the wrong direction, um, it will basically lock up. Right there, you can see. Normally, when it's spinning. It's no big deal and even if you hold the base part it's still no big deal but if you were to tweak this guy left or right it runs right into that guy so I designed a new one here where the top slide is one piece and the bottom is actually internally um, held together So, this cannot come out of here. It is one solid piece. Inside there, there's a shaft, and then it's um, a bigger piece inside there, all housed inside a housing inside this one piece. Well, that appears. Probably might have to loosen it up a little bit, but... Push on it in different angles, and... If there's any notches in there. Well, that appears pretty good. Now, um, now when you push on this top piece here, it doesn't it doesn't affect the bottom piece. So this can freely float wherever it's going. One recommendation is that you uh, that you kind of uh, sharpen these points just a tad bit. Now I redrew these, they look pretty sharp, but the sharper these the tip is, if you make it too sharp it won't print. So you might have to manually kind of um, sharpen the tip there. Just the tip, don't go too deep. So I gave that tip uh, kind of a more of a point. This one's almost dead pointy, and that um, <clears throat> that's going to help make sure you don't get snagged on anything. So let's replace this guy. See what helps. Now, let's do the drill test again, that new, that new guy. And this time we'll hold it. No problem. Ow. 
<clears throat> I'll have to put a little bit longer screw on this side. You can hear how much pressure I'm putting on it. You can hear it grinding. Oh, it actually melted it. Nice. See all the parts it's put out? I actually melted the I melted the edge of that thing. This thing won't be running at high speed, but lubricant might be a wise option. I'm probably going to use some lithium grease on this. I don't have any currently. I'm going to have to get some. That was what I was going to use on it, even though it's running very, very slow. These parts will eventually wear out. Oh man, I, I wore a, I wore a spot in the side of that thing. It's really hard to see. Oh, and there's that. All right, so I like the functionality of this piece a lot better. Alright, so we'll start there. See how long this thing runs. I'm currently printing the gearbox. Yep, and I actually recorded this for your enjoyment only. Check out this ridiculous clip. That's okay. That's pretty much all the pieces. A few screws here and there, um, a few set screws basically, and um, those are um, different sizes depending on basically just, uh, you just have to kind of look at it. No joke.